Welcome all. In this video, I'm going to take a look at a password protected zip and just some different things I tried to recover the password. Um, as you'll see throughout this video, uh, or when we get to the end of it anyway, it was quite simple, but I don't spend a lot of time. Usually if I find a password protected zip, I just ignore it. And so I spent a little more time than usual just trying to unravel this. So I learned a couple of things I, I wanted to share. Um, as you can see here, I have uh, quite a suggestive, a suggestive name here for this zip, and I'll just leave that alone for now. Uh, but you see I'm using 7-zip and the extract command to try to extract the zip file. Uh, I get prompted for a password. I'm just going to control C. Well, I'll hit enter then. And you'll see that um, there were some errors with the archive. And in particular, it says that two files, the Heegen and then the Remcos Pro, um, were pre presented with the wrong password. So what I didn't recognize at first was that even though I want to recover these two files, not every file in this archive is actually password protected. So the quick answer and something that I did not realize is that they, the, you know, whoever is distributing this zip, and I suspect it is the authors of Remcos, they actually included the password file in the zip file and I just needed to extract it. And you can see if we look at the file characteristics here, uh, we do have some bytes in this file and it does contain the password. So I guess I didn't realize that um, first thing, uh, even after all of these years of being in technology, that uh, zip archives could contain a mixture. Now I wanted to dig a little bit deeper into that. And so I found that the uh, the L command, well, let's, let's, let me just back up a second here. The, the L argument or switch, this will provide you with a listing of the content in that particular archive. And you'll see things like the size and you know how compressed it is, as well as then the names of the files in that archive. Now we can take this one step further, and I think this was probably the most interesting discovery that I had. Uh, if we provide the dash SLT argument, this will give you an actual breakdown of every file in the archive. And more importantly, at least more relevant to this quick video, the, the path and the name, and then whether or not it's encrypted. So we can see that the executables here which are, you know, are obviously the most interesting part of this zip, are, are encrypted, whereas the text files are not. And there we go, there's those two files. So that's easy enough to extract, as you saw with just performing the extraction, 7-zip in this case, dumped what it could, prompted for the password. When I did not provide the password, then it failed. And so now we could recover that. However, this also sent me down a little bit of a rabbit hole and that I started looking at and that I, not having not recognized that at first, I started looking for utilities that could maybe help me brute force. Because again, I've come across many of zips in my time where I don't know the password and they're protected. And it would be interesting and even beneficial at times uh, to recover those. So I did a little bit of digging and came across ZipDump. This is a utility provided by Didier Stevens. And as a you know a general fan of all of the work and utilities that he has produced over the years, this seemed like a really good option. You can look at uh, the help and you can see there are a number of things here or ways in which we can you know, run this program. Uh, there's a translate option. This will come up in just a moment. There is a password, a password file, and a password file stop. I can't say that I fully understand all of the differences here in some of these arguments, but for the purposes of this video, I'm going to use password file stop with the, you know, the, the, the text file that contains all of the pass passwords that I want to brute force. There is also a built-in list that you can use and invoke, but I was hoping for at the time, not knowing what the password was, going for a larger set of passwords. And so I found the RockU password file, which is a pretty common. If you're not familiar with it, you can do a Google search for it and you'll find information about it. I believe it's part of the John the Ripper uh, password cracker suite, although my, my, you know, my memory of John and what it all entails has kind of faded over the years. Um, so I downloaded that. Let's take a look at this file here so you can see there's there's the original rock U that i downloaded from a, uh, from a github repo uh, if we look at the size you'll see that this is a fairly large file 134 meg so that's a lot of plain text passwords and the arguments that i'm going to provide are just to invoke the verbose mode the password file stop and then the path to the password file which is just in this current directory now this is where i ran into my first little rabbit hole and that was mainly in that when I tried to utilize this file as input for zip dump, I started getting a couple of different error messages, both of them indicating that there was a problem with some of the bytes in the file. 
Now, this is a large file, and I really didn't want to have to spend a great deal of time trying to figure out what those bytes were. So my first thought was, well, I'm okay if there are, you know, if there maybe there's some some wide character or some UTF-16 strings in there, or just some errant byte values that I can get rid of. I don't really care as long as I have the ASCII characters and probably the new lines. I should be good to go. So my next thought was to use something like sed in order to look for those byte values that are outside of essentially the ASCII range and the ASCII character. So I decided to be maybe a little bit greedy and that um, anything that is above a 7E, if you look at the, well, let's just do that quick. We can do man ASCII and you can look at the, the hexadecimal values here. We have the, the two columns of this chart that represents the octal, the decimal, the hexadecimal, and then the character. And then this is essentially the second column. So the hex value starts at zero, 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 uh, we may not need all of these. As I mentioned, I really only want a line feed, so I could probably be a little bit more precise, especially if I have to. I really probably only care about from hex 20. Uh, and then if we look at the right side here, uh, hex 7E is the tilde, and hex 7F then is the delete. So I really probably don't need the delete either. So therefore, if we stop at hex 7E, that's a pretty good range of characters that will be in this file. Okay, so the idea then is to use a character class to say any hex value that is above 7e up to the maximum byte value, let's just replace it with nothing. This is where I ran into another issue and where I get this, uh, this invalid collation character error message with set. And again, part of the, you know, I, I, there's often times where I will spend far, far, far too much time trying to figure out what all of this means, especially when it comes to recording a video. But in this case, um, I didn't really have the time, nor did I want to spend the time. So I did back to the search engine, did some searching, found a Stack Overflow article that talked about setting the LC underscore all to C, and this will help with some of this locale settings and these issues with the byte values. And so once I did that, I was able to run my set command again. Now I have a second file that I output, and that is the rocku2.txt. You can see that it is, a, it's, you know, looks to be about the same size, uh, at least it's close enough. And hopefully at this point in time, I've purged any of those unnecessary byte values. So now we can go back to zip dump, provide it with a rocku2 text file. A lot of, there's a lot of content there, so it's going to take a little bit before uh, zip dump picks up the file, but uh, once it's running, it appears, and I'm not overly extensive or uh, familiar with the zip dump, but it seems like once it's running, and I've, I've gone through this now a couple of times and it's ran to completion once it's got here, is you can see the number of passwords that it's attempted and the amount, the percentage in which um, it is completed brute forcing passwords against this zip. And you can also set the, see then the passwords a second, and um, so it's going to depend a lot on your, you know, your the resources and the power of the system that you're crack, you, you know, that you're using to try to do the, the brute forcing on. So in this case, now you could let it run, and if it happens to be in that password list, then of course you'll get notification that the password recovery was successful and it was able to decrypt that archive for you. Uh, in this case, as I mentioned, why I wanted to start with this at the beginning of the video there was a much easier solution and that was just simply to recognize that the archive can contain mixed files it contained the password to decrypt the encrypted content and that was an easy win so lesson learned for me also got familiar with some other tools so when i find those password protected zips in the future i'm going to give this a try to see if that can help recover because oftentimes i find those archives do not contain a nice text file with the password inside of it thanks for watching hope to see you all in a future video